All right, we are live here at the National Conference for Media Reform. I am here with Alice Olstein. She is a DC correspondent. I also have George Lavender, who is a reporter and a member of the steering committee of the Free Speech Radio News, which you can find at fsrn.org. Guys, thanks so much for sitting down with me. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. All right, so guys, um, I'm familiar with with your with your with your network, but if people aren't, uh, just give them a rundown. What uh, what 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 is the Free Speech Radio Network? We are an independent global news show. We produce a half hour report five days a week, and we air on nearly 100 stations around the country and on the web. Um, we have a global network of independent freelance reporters, um, more than 200 of them all around the world in more than 50 countries, and they are reporting for us from a lot of countries that you don't hear from in, in the mainstream media, and even in a lot of independent progressive media, we have reporters in the West Bank, who are from there, from the area, speak the language, know the people in the streets. We have a reporter in the tribal area of Pakistan. We have, you know, just reporters all around the world reporting on human rights issues, uh, conflict, a lot of environmental struggles, um, organizing around and adapting to climate change, um, just all kinds of stuff. And also all across the United States. I'm in D.C., so I'm in the Capitol, in the Supreme Court, you know, confronting people in power, but also talking to people in the streets who come to D.C. to protest, which happens all the time. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I love working for us, and it's been so exciting to be here at the conference and getting to meet everyone. And actually, the structure of, of your organization is actually kind of unique as well. So, uh, George, why don't you describe of actually how the structure uh, of the network actually exists? Well, we have been around for over a decade, and we are pretty unique in the way we're structured. We are a reporter and producer run collective, um, which means that everyone who produces for us can be involved in deciding about the direction that the organization takes. Um, that's pretty unique and pretty special. And for me, that was um, one of the big appeals about being part of FSRN has been the ability to be involved in every aspect of it. I started as a reporter and back in England um, and have sin and since become involved more in um, in the steering committee, which is how we make decisions. Um, and, uh, yeah, we basically have... Um, we basically encourage involvement from everyone at every level of organization. And so, unfortunately... Can at the I add one? Yeah, small, of course you can. Small thing to that. Yeah, I, I also started as a reporter, and having reported for a lot of other organizations before that, it's just been so amazing to, you know, be in our staff meetings, which are all over the phone and online because we're spread all over the world. But, you know, to, to have them say, you know, what do you think about this issue? And you would you would never get that in another organization. Reporters are viewed as very expendable right. um, at, at the other places I've worked, and they certainly wouldn't ask what you think about some sort of major direction of the organization so it's just been really amazing how many people are in the collective right uh, right now uh, around i mean to give you a, a, just a, a rough estimate 10 around 10 okay yeah so Maybe a dozen a dozen yeah depending on the day <laughs> and who shows up yeah but so unfortunately um uh Listeners who are familiar with you guys may be aware that uh, you guys are in a, a little bit of financial trouble right now. So describe how that came about and what people can actually do to help. I can start. Sure. Um, well, for most of our 13-year history, we have relied um, on the Pacifica Foundation for most of our funding. And they have fallen on hard times right now as well and, and recently informed us that they don't know when they'll be able to make the, their payments to us. And that has really pushed us to find um, new sources of funding and really diverse sources of funding so we're not relying on one single source. Um, and we have been reaching out to our grassroots listener base and they've been extremely generous, but we were also reaching out to foundations and meeting a lot of great people and getting a lot of great advice here at this conference. And yeah, we just, we, we really need support to be able to keep doing what we do. So what are you, I mean, at the moment you're trying to, are you trying to raise a certain amount of money for like uh, the fiscal year? How, how is actually, is, is it working before, until you find out, uh, I guess, what Pacifica can do? 
yeah, it's not just about that. It's also, you know, whether whether um, our our um, approaches to different foundations are successful or not. So um, mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of moving parts. But we set a goal of $100,000, and we are more than halfway there. And we need about 37000 more to make it to that goal, which would fund us through the end of June. Mm-hmm. And so... And I will say... Um, we calculate that that'll last us to that much um, based on our operating costs, which are extremely low. We are completely bare bones. We don't have a big fancy office. We don't have any offices at all. Everybody works from wherever they are. Uh, and we don't have health care. We don't have sick days. We're just doing this because we love it and um, producing uh, this global show with very little resources. So not not only are we trying to raise money to, to keep doing what we do the same but we have all these visions of what we could do if we had even more money yeah it's a problem that really uh you know uh, obviously it's a problem that uh, we're at a, at, a, at a media reform conference it's like your 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 plight is not uh yours alone it's it's you know everyone you know my, my myself our, our, our show we need more money than you know everybody needs this but it's also it, it's 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 really telling you know how really important things fall through the, the cracks. And, and, and the fact that you guys actually are a global network is really impressive. And the fact that you guys, you know, it's not just, uh, it's not just one place. You actually have uh, a global outlook, which is what makes your show, uh, you know, special and unique and, and great. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that, that is, uh, that's worth, worth uh, you know, the progressive community uh, trying to support because what you guys give to, to the community is, is of, of a lot of value. So before I let you guys go, um, just give, each of you give me, like, what is one of the most... Uh, uh, memorable or amazing instances of, of, of a report that you guys came across in the last, you know, in, in, in the history that you guys have been working there, something that really just, 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 you know, grabbed you and, and, and you know, can be, it can be tragic, can be fun, whatever you guys think. Uh, start with, if <laughs> you're both pulling on each other, radio here. So uh, let's start with you. Um, well, there's just been so much. Um, like I said, in DC, there's just constantly things going on and, um, but it's really amazing with FSRN that I get to focus on some of the stuff that isn't getting covered by the mainstream media. It's not the big story of the day. Um, so, for instance, um, when the CIA whistleblower John Kiriakou was recently sentenced to a term in prison and, and went to start serving that, um, I got to interview him in person just a few days before he, he, he went into prison and have a long interview with him and his attorney, who is also a whistleblower herself, Jocelyn Radak. And just to hear about what he went through being tried um, by his own government that he's been working for under the Espionage Act, and then getting to put that in context for our listeners about what the Obama administration has been um, doing in terms of the crackdown on, on whistleblowers and, and um, um people fighting for transparency and so that was a very moving interview this is a man <laughs> with five young children yeah. the the legal fees for this case have completely financially ruined his his family and um and and you know they're they're raising money um the Go- government accountability project who's representing him is, is raising money to support his family while he's in prison and so this is uh, j- just to get to speak to him face to face but then explain the all the the laws and the process sort of behind this this um human situation was was really moving and again a man who is you know doing what you think a government servant should do and exposing expo- exposing corruption exposing wrongdoing that is what you know you're supposed to do and and of course you know obama's whistleblower situation the war on whistleblowers is is you know bigger than any president in in our history so I, w- I will say you know we're not an advocacy show we're a hard news show but um it, it, uh, most news reports about his situation didn't have an, uh, an in-depth conversation with him the way yeah. we did and getting face to face and and letting him speak for himself and then letting listeners decide for themselves what what how they feel about it and what sure. I'll go, you can add to this and then tell go to yours george sure well i was going to say in terms of stories that have impacted me that we've put out um i think as alice already mentioned we've we do have a huge network of reporters around the world and i think that's what makes us particularly special and i do encourage if your listeners haven't heard our show to, to go check it out to yeah. go and check it out because it's we do have voices that you just don't hear on the dial and that's what's scary about losing that resource because if you you just won't hear reporters on the ground in gaza for example and i'm thinking of our correspondent there and i think for me a lot of the most powerful stories are the ones behind the stories so for example our correspondent in gaza um we know because we work with him and um he's part of our extended network of reporters that 
that he what he goes through in terms of reporting on what happens in Gaza. So, for example, we knew that he was uh, very close to bombing during the last Israeli raids. We could hear the bombs when he was on the phone with us. Wow. Yeah, and, and you know, we were talking about how what we needed to have, you know, a plan in case he was injured or killed. And I think it's just, and I think his dedication and the dedication of lots of reporters like him um, that we that do air on it for Saran um, is what I think keeps me inspired and why I um, feel so committed to this particular program. Absolutely. Again, uh, Alice Olstein, George Lavender, uh, they are both part of the Free Speech Radio News. You can find them at fsrn.org. If you haven't uh, heard their show, check it out. Trust me, you're going to like it. Uh, if you like this, you're going to like that show. It's, it's, it's really great stuff. Um, and yeah, and if you can, help them out. They're, they do really amazing work. Uh, so guys, thanks for sitting down with me and uh, have a good rest of the conference. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. <laughs>